Welcome to your next tutorial in JavaScript, and today we're going to be talking about loops. Now, the reason why loops are probably one of the most fundamental things to learn in any programming language is because it will keep you from having to write the same piece of code that you would like to execute multiple times again and again. And there's two real reasons why. First of all, it's going to take a lot of time for you, the developer, to type it out, even if you copy and paste it. That's still time out of your hands. Second of all, it's going to make this file, no matter what it is, a lot bigger because it's going to be holding all that text. Uh, and if you're in another language like Visual Basic, C Sharp, C++, Java, the application that you're creating will take longer to load. Likewise, in JavaScript, it's going to take your browser longer to load. And like I always say, uh, if for the user that comes by your site, if it takes longer for that site to load than they like, then they're not going to like that and they're not going to want to come back. So let's start. Um, we're going to start off with the first of three loops we're going to be learning, the while loop, followed by a pair of parentheses, opening and, curling, uh, opening and closing curly brace. And uh, as you could have guessed, whatever information goes, in, uh, your code goes in between these two curly braces here, as you, as you might have been able to figure out. So I'll type in document.writes and maybe I want whatever to come out to be, I don't know, high, follow, followed by a break tag. Uh, also remember HTML tags, they have to be within the, uh, the quotes, can't be outside, otherwise it won't work. Okay, so how do we get this to execute in X number of times? Well, what you have to do is within these parentheses goes an expression, and that expression is almost always a comparison. So before we can compare something, we need to create a variable. So I'll create a variable called i, and I'll set it equal to zero. And the reason why I'm using i is because anytime we're doing a comparison inside a loop, a programmer will almost always, whenever given the chance, call it i. It's pretty much a rule of thumb. So while i is less than, I'll say 10, execute this, this piece of code. Well, we don't want to just do this because i is equal to zero. It'll always be less than 10. So there's going to be an infinite loop. Uh, so it won't work on your browser. If you're dealing with any other kind of language, it would cause your application to crash, even. So you don't, you don't want to do that. You don't want an infinite loop. So what we can do is increment it. So let's say by plus equals 3. I'll click Save, and I'll refresh the page, and it pops up four times. So the reason for this is because the first time we go through the loop, it starts off as 0, and the second time it's 3, then 6, then 9. Then the next time it comes around, it's greater than 10, so it breaks out of the loop. Then it continues on to the rest of your code. So, uh, and, there, and most of the time when you're incrementing, it's usually by 1. That's most likely the most likely case you'll have, and there's actually a shorthand for that and it's two arithmetic operators I have not shown you yet. One is I++. plus plus. So this will increment by one, so we should have 10 highs. And now we do. There's also the decrement, which is I minus minus. So I'm gonna have to make my variable greater. I'll make it 30. And while well, I is greater than 10, if I kept it as less than 10, then it would never execute. So now we have twice as many, because it's twice the distance from 30 to 10, as it is 0 to 10. Uh, and yeah, that's about it for the, the while loop. The next one is going to be very easy to learn, and that's the do while loop. And it's almost exactly the same. Basically, you type do here, then you type while here, followed by your expression. And I've said this in a previous video, don't worry about the semicolon after these, after loops after anything that typically ends with curly braces, you do not need semicolons. So even though this isn't, but you still don't. So let's say while i is less than 25, or was it greater? It's greater than, excuse me. You don't want it less than, because then it won't execute. So I think it'll only pop up five times. And it does, only five times. And that's pretty much for the do-while loop. It's um, pretty much the same thing. The only real difference is now that the expression is below the loop, 
this information, whatever code you put here, will always be executed at least once. It re it, it's practically reading it like, a, like you would a book. You read top to bottom. So once it hits this information, it's going to do it. There's no expression telling it otherwise. But anyways, once it hits that expression, even if it's false that first time, it won't matter because it will have already read it. And that's about it for the do while loop. The next one is the for loop. Probably the most complicated to remember, but it's really not that bad. So you just type in for, a pair of parentheses, then your curly braces. Now there's three pieces of information that go within these uh, parentheses. And all three pieces of information we've already used in this tutorial. So first is the declaration of your variable. Or it doesn't have to be the, the declaration. You can uh, already have it declared and only initialize it. Doesn't matter. But I'm going to get rid of this now. So, but I'm going to declare it. You don't have to use the var, but I will because it makes me feel more comfortable. So I'll say var i is equal to zero. I'll throw in a semicolon. And the next piece of information that comes in is the expression that we usually have had. So I'll say, well, i is less than 10. Throw in another semicolon, and then you have however much it's incrementing by or decrementing by. So you could have i plus equals 2. And you don't need another semicolon. Don't worry about that. And I'll have it write. Oh, I should have copied pasted this. I'll still have it write high. So I could save and 2 into 10, that should be what, 5 times? Oh, I already have 5 times. I should go, uh, let's go 4. So that should only pop up 2 times. Or th maybe 3 times. I think it's 3 times, excuse me. Yeah, 3 times. Because the first time is 0, then 4, and then 8. So it pops up 8 times. And um, yeah, that's, that's about it for, it for 4 loops. Now one thing I'd like to point out for you is just like with if statements, you can nest loops. You can have loops within loops. Likewise, you can have if statements inside for um, in any kind of loops, and you can have loops inside if statements. You can do any kind of combination you want, and you can nest as many as you want forever, basically. So, uh, I'll, since we have time, I'd like to show you an example of nested loops. So I'm going to create, actually I should uh, probably declare my i, and I'm going to create a while loop. While, let's say i is less than 10. And we're probably going to increment it by 1. Is that alright? I think that's alright. What else do I want this loop to do? I would like it to write something out for me. I would like it to write out the word by, followed by some break tags like what we have been doing. So it's going to do the obvious, right? It's going to write a bunch of, bunch of bys, and it does 10 times. Let's throw in a loop in here. So uh, I'm, you can have the loop come before this document.write, uh, and it would make a difference, just a slight difference. It, whatever information is inside this nested loop would then be executed first before the by is written. That's the only difference. But I would like it to be written first, so it's more clear. So I'm going to create a for loop, opening curly brace, and a closing curly brace. And what I would like it to write is, I'll have it say hi, and a pair of break tags. So for our uh, three pieces of information, I would like to declare a second variable, j, set that equal to zero, while, I don't know, j is less than five and j++. So we don't need our incrementation there. If that's a word incrementation, I don't think so. T I take that back. That was bad. Okay, let's see what happens. I'll refresh the page and look at this. Now allow me to explain this. What happens is, um, so we're declaring i which is equal to zero, so now it's going to go into this while loop. So it's going to print this by, which it does. 
Then the next thing it looks at is this for loop. It's declaring this j as equal to zero. So five times, because it's incrementing by one, it's going to print this high. So one, two, three, four, five. Then it breaks out and increments the i by one. So now it's one less than 10. It's going to do the same thing. Um, uh, print the by, and then this j goes back to zero because of this. So then it's going to do this five times again. Then it breaks out and increments the i by one again. And it keeps doing this until this while loop is finally done. So as you can see, 10 times, let's see there's 10 buys. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So we have 10 buys and 10 times 5, so we have 50 highs. Uh, and that's about it for this tutorial. I hope this was useful for you, and I'll see you next time.